Hi, my name is Lou Ferrigno Jr. and you're watching The Red Booth Show. Hi, welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Q. On tonight's episode, I have actor Lou Ferrigno Jr. and he talks about his new TV show and also growing up in the business. So come and join us. So hey, how's it going, Lou? Good. 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 Thanks for being on the show. I'm thrilled to be here. This is very exciting, actually, because you have so much going on right now. Congratulations on the show, I'd like to say. I've watched a lot of just getting ready to know what's coming um, and your success and how many episodes you've done so far. It's awesome. Thank so you. So I'm very happy and honored to be here. Just wow. Let you know. Thank you very much. That's so cool. Now, why don't you tell everybody about the new show that you just got picked up in? Um, so the new show, uh, CBS series SWAT. Um, which is going to be airing this November, which is really cool. It's a reboot of the series in the 70s, which was, and which the 2003 movie was a reboot of, and now they're rebooting two characters or a few characters from the 2003 movie. So it's a reboot of a reboot. Nice. Um, and it's uh, really got a great pedigree with Sean Ryan. Um, Justin Lin directed. Sean Ryan was a producer of The Shield, um, a lot of other great procedural shows. Um, and it's a great cast, and it's just a really exciting, big action. Um, we got helicopters, we got guns, we, I'm kicking at doors. Like, it's like a kid's dream come true. So, <laughs> it's good. It's a really exciting time. That's fantastic. Congratulations. That's a big show right Thank now. You. Yeah. So now, obviously, you are Lou Ferrigno Jr., so you have been sort of raised in the business with your dad yeah. being the Hulk. He's super cool. I, I got to get him in passing on the red carpet and i was like holy crap he's so tall he's a big dude he's a giant which i guess is probably why he <laughs> yeah. got cast as the hulk i mean he's like very hulking so it's like it's yeah. appropriate and they even had... now he's hulking he's a huge yeah, yeah and he's, he's a big dude super buff still he's he's in better shape than me and it's like it's kind of like embarrassing like he's like, <laughs> he's like he'll be like louis do i need to lose more weight and i'm like and i'm like i oh, you know you're good and they're like, like no dad eat a donut i know right <laughs> I know. increase my self-esteem and then in a week he'll just be like shredded again and i'm like it's amazing that's crazy. So, yeah, it's, it's inspiring, really, is what it is. But I was actually um, a heavy set youth. Um, really? Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was chubs. You know, no way! I, for sure, yeah. And people say they don't believe it, but... Um, and then you're like, here's my school picture. I know. <laughs> well, yeah, I look, I looked like a chunk from the Goonies, is what people, <laughs> oh my what God. people said. Yeah, and I had like, I had braces, and then at one point I had dyed hair, and I was just really chubby. Um, but he never like pushed it on us. You know what I mean? He never, um, he never like forced it for us to work out. He never like shamed us into anything like that. And like for That's that, good. I'm super grateful. And we found it ourselves. And now my sister has written a book about fitness and health. Um, I'm a personal trainer. I have, I've had a business for about 10 years. Uh, my mom has, has counseled people on fitness and health. Um, so it's very, it's pervasive in our family and it's, uh, it's really grateful to have like a very health conscious kind of, um, stable kind of mentality in our household it's that's cool. cool yeah yeah because then it just helps set the example for everyone else i guess you know yeah i mean i, I it's funny because on set i'll be um either i was working out with another one of my co-stars and um and we went to the gym and all of a sudden right then i started like kind of taking the reins and and naturally because and, and helping people and people will ask me about nutrition tips and ask me about training tips and i'll be next thing i'll be counseling people on their fitness goals which turns into like therapy and i'm like okay cool like we'll just get there together you know yeah um but if you I, like send them a bill <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly like um so but yeah i mean i it's it's a passion of mine it's a, it's ingrained in me uh fitness and health so um if i like to help people and i like to make people feel good about themselves that's awesome. Yeah. Well, we have to take a quick break. Cool. But we'll be right back with Lou Ferrigno Jr. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with Lou Ferrigno Jr. How's it going? This bump. It's going all right so far. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, so I know you were just talking about all of your fitness sort of history and getting into working out and stuff and training people. I just thought only like meatheads go to the gym or something sure. or you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> guilty. But but then once you start working out, though, you actually feel like really amazing. Yes. Like I was like, wow. Yes. I'm really decrepit, and now I feel so much better, and I can do stuff. And proud of you, girl. Thank you. That's good. Anyways. Right on. That's for everyone. Go try working out. It's good for you. Right on. Yep. <laughs> now, you've been in a ton of TV shows as well. Not just, obviously, in the new SWAT, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But, um... I've done my fair amount. Yeah. I like to say. I like to think. Yeah, you, so you've done Teen Wolf. Yeah, I play a lot of... Uh, I can be, tend to be cast in a lot of law enforcement, military kind of people. Um, roles. Yeah. Um, Teen Wolf was a kind of a, a dickhead officer. Okay. Um, Officer Ryan Kelly, and um, that was a, it was a great experience. It was really cool. It was, um, but yeah. So done that. It's I've really done... cool playing a dickhead. You know, I don't know. I, 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 I guess it comes off easy. I don't know because they're paying me to. So uh, you know, I'm, I, I I think I'm a nice guy. I try to be. So. Well, that's why you have act. You have to act, right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And because I, I heard Dennis Farina was who, was who always played just a jerk off, who was a cop in real life, was such a jerk off. He, I heard he was the nicest guy in the world. R.I.P. But uh, he was, and it was so funny. I thought that was such an interesting juxtaposition that you could be such a jerk in all these roles, but be the nicest person. And I'm like, that's where I kind of want to be. You know? That's cool. So people are like, he's not like anything that he plays on TV. You know? That's so funny. So. <laughs> but you also get hero roles too. Yes, I do. Like... And super hero roles like Super Sammy on Mutt and Stuff um, on Nickelodeon, oh. which is Caesar Milan's son. Um, they had they produced a show with Sid and Marty Croft, legendary um, kids show producers um, <laughs> since the 70s. Um, and I was, I was honored to be able to pick, wear Dawn a cape and blue and... So and, you're the whole thing? Like, oh, the whole, I am like... super Sammy. Um, <laughs> a super superhero. And, uh, and I had, it was a fascinating, for me it was one of the coolest stories in terms of booking it because I, I got these sides and I was just like, what is this role? Like, I'm a real actor. I don't need, I don't need this. What am I doing this? And then finally I was thinking to myself, like, I'm not working. I don't have a job. Someone's going to book this role. Why not it be me? So then I spent all night and I just was like, and you know And they what? pay you for it. So. Yeah. So I was like, but, but I was like, I was like, no, I'm, I, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bust my ass on these, on these sides and I'm going to give it all for this. And I went in there and the woman, uh, the casting director, um, was so great, but she did not expect this. And she started going on about all these, how she auditioned these celebrity kids. And she's like, yeah, I saw this guy's son. Yeah. And this guy's, but, oh, well, but your manager said good things about you. So I'll see you. And I was like, okay, well. Why would she even need to tell you that in the first place? Because I think cause she was just, I don't know. It was, it was yeah. cause it just made for a better story cause it was meant to be, yeah. you know? And then finally, and I was like, well, regardless of how this goes, you're going to have a great time. And she goes, well, let's see what you got. And all of a sudden, I go and I had a skin tight shirt on, and then I just busted it out. And <laughs> super Sammy. And she started laughing, and then she cut the camera off. She's like, Can we do that one more time? We did it again. And then I had to leave town the next day, and because I was expecting maybe a call, a call back two days from, it, um, from them. And she gave my manager a call, and he said, You need to be at 4 p.m. in the valley in front of uh, Marty Croft for a call back. And I was like, And I was in Riverside. And so I had to Uber all the way back, made it. And they were so excited, all of them. You guys don't know how hard that is, okay? <laughs> For people that don't live in L.A., that's crazy. Yeah, yeah That you was, got from Riverside to the Valley. It was, it was like an $80 uh, Uber drive ride. It was, it was insane. Um, but then I, I put my skin-tight shirt on, back on, and I was in this, and I had all this space in the audition. And then in the callback, it was in front, like, I'm, I'm talking like the booth space, this red booth space of space to, to move around. With Marty Croft, the director, the casting, and all sitting there looking at me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it all in, in this little space. So I started doing this, did the first scene, and then they all looked at each other and they're like, what? Like, who is this guy? And then uh, I was like, well, you want to do the second scene? And then uh, Bradley Zweig, the, um, the uh, show owner, was like, he folded up. He's like, I've seen enough. Welcome to the show. And I was like, whoa. I was like, this is like, it actually happened. So um, I like to say that I am super sandy. And I think you should do the Super Sammy thing. Like. Super Sammy. Super. It's, it's super fast. Super strong. And super. Super. <laughs> so something like that. Uh, but that walking, was awesome. Well, I had a cape on and I was playing with dogs and French French bulldogs. And I'm like, this is like, I've reached, I made it. That's the pinnacle. You know? Yeah. I oh. mean, there's nowhere to go from there. Uh, pugs. French yeah. bulldogs and a cape. And so that's on Nickelodeon? It's on Nickelodeon, Nick Jr. We did four episodes. Um, and they can't go too long because Calvin gets older and he, um, and he went from, he started at like 15 and then now he's like 19. So, you know, once he turned into like 28, 29, it gets a little weird. His playing. voice gets deeper. Yeah. yeah and facial beard. hair. Right. You know? Um, okay. so, 
those will be running for a while. So, and some people come up to me and they're like, yo, you are Super Sammy. I'm like, that's me. You know? They're like, yeah. And my dream was always as a kid to play a superhero, but and I got there, you know, but it yeah. wasn't what I expected, but it's, <laughs> but it's been, it's pretty awesome. It's, well, I, I mean, considering that you're now in SWAT and considering how many superhero movies are coming out... I can see that you might even get one of those kind of roles too. I yes, mean, I, I hopefully. I, I just I'm telling the future. Yeah, this please. Is gonna please, happen. please, just. Okay, yeah, good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you got it. Okay, good. Oh, well, we have to take another quick break. Cool. We will be right back with Lou Ferrigno Jr. Bye bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with actor Lou Ferrigno Jr. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello again. <laughs> so we were talking about some of your recent TV shows, and there's uh, there's more that you've done as well, and you have some new projects coming out too. So what, why don't you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I did a. Um, I was lucky enough to do a um, picture, uh, a film for. It'll be on the Pixel Network and then the Hallmark <laughs> Channel, which I always wanted to do. Um, it's called Happily Never After. Okay. Um, with Ted McGinley and um, Danielle Savory. From Too Close to Home. Actually, I play a nice character in this. I play an attorney, um, and I don't want to give it away, but like I'm just like the nicest guy possible. And it's like one. It's like why isn't she going for him? And I wanted to have all like Middle America to watch this and be like, oh my god, this guy. Why? Well, give him a shot. Um, so <laughs> it should be on the Hallmark Channel within the next few months. So check out that one. It's gonna be cool. Happily Never After. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that like a Christmas type thing or no? Um, they they kind of sold it as that, but there's no there was no Christmasness to it. It was okay. it was just a classic uh, kind of romantic comedy um, film that you'll see on one of these Hallmark and then um, what's the other one Hallmark Channel and then um, I don't know these these they're awesome rom coms. You know what I mean? They get you get what you get. So it's cool. It That's should be fun. cool. Was it fun doing a romantic comedy? Yeah, it was. It was great. Uh, it was. It was fun because I just had to really. Because um, a lot of times I play. I, I've been. I did How I Met Your Mother, which I was a, the boyfriend. So I have like I played a lot of boyfriend roles. Okay. Um, I did. Um, how was that working on How I Met Your Mother? How I Met Your Mother was like awesome. It was my first big kind of show that I didn't really watch, but it was in its ninth season, and I came on as a co-star. And the, the, the breakdown was tough looking finance guys. And then I punched Ted in the face oh, on the first no. episode. Oh, and God. then they, they brought me back for um, a big, much bigger role in um, how, when they released or they unveiled the mother. And um, it was episode 200. Oh, that's a big deal. It was a big deal. And yeah. I was the boyfriend and I proposed and I was the nice guy. I was, um, I loved her and I proposed to her and she said no. And then she ended up with Ted, right? Um, but I was like, I know. But I had, a, I, had like a, I had a beach house and they wrote me into the whole episode, which was awesome. Um, another boyfriend role. Um, so I, I tend to play like the boyfriend too, whether it's like the jerk boyfriend or I played the gay boyfriend on Nashville, which was really cool. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I was did like, you have to do like a kissing scene? I did not. No, no, no. Okay. I just, um, w like, because uh, I'm wondering how that is. Like when you're heterosexual and you have to do a kissing scene, like that's gotta be an awkward situation. But you're an actor, so you gotta do it. Uh that's true. That's uh, that's very true. That's a good <laughs> point. And uh, but yeah, I have yet. I would like to know beforehand if I would have to do it. Um, and it would be it'd be interesting to see where you don't um, want just impromptu situation yeah just like start making out with the dude uh i'm not there yet i don't no. think with my art um but i've i've met guys that have done roles where they show up and they're like all right well you have a like softcore sex scene pretty much and they're like what and they have to do it or they don't get the job and i've worked with two guys that i worked with each project with both of the guys and saw their side of the story and it was really interesting because it's a it's it's quite a conundrum to be in to like if what did they do did they do it or did well, they go one, one was like sure i'll do it and then the other guy was like okay he did it but he was like not okay with how it went and he and when i talked to him about it it was very like just very tight succinct and we talked about it quickly and that was it and i was like all right let's um so but i think it's it's something that you should be notified in advance yeah definitely better. um but i have yet to to face that so we'll see 
So you were in Nashville. Yeah, and it was uh, it was one day thing. It was very small, but it was um, but it was cool. It was, I could say that I played a gay character, so it was cool. I was like the they were the feuding. The two of them was like, oh, I'm gonna go to this, and he's like, well, okay, I'll see you there. And then he brings me the, the, this guy along, then the other guy to make the other guy jealous. And I was like, okay, nice. But, I mean, you play it, you play it as as such, like a guy or girl. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Love is love. That's Remember? right. Love is love. Yeah, love will prevail. So that's cool. Yeah, for sure. And so, so you played um, a lot of different roles. You also were even in Days of Our Lives, which I know that you didn't do that for a very long time, but that was like a notable little thing as well. Well, that was the first job um, that I booked, aside from like a little reality show, um, that I, I'd always wanted to be an actor because I was raised in this business. And then finally, when I, that was the first dramatic role that I booked where I was drunk guy. And it was actually really cool. Like, Drunk guy. With Sean Christian, who I'm now working on with Trapped. Um, it all comes full circle. Okay. Um, and I was, they go to Chicago to a club, and I'm sitting in a booth like this, um, and I hit on this girl, and and that was the first time where I saw my work, and I was like, that was actually pretty good. And I felt like, I was like, I can actually do this for a living. I was like, okay. How old were you when you did your first scene with them? Oh, goodness. I think it was 26? Okay. 24? Five, something like that. Um, and it was the first um, real dramatic where I went in there and I had the first callback I ever got and then first booked role. And when I got the set, I was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Because I was raised on set. I was on film, movies, uh, TV sets all across the world. Um, and I had resisted so much growing up because my that was my what my dad did, and I didn't want to do that. And then I went to college. Really? And, went to college. And you were football. against doing it because my mom was an act is an actor. My dad's an actor. My sister went to SUNY Purchase, got a BFA, and I was like, and she was the actor, and I didn't want. I was the athlete, and then finally I did. But I what, always what wanted sport were you in? Football. Okay. Yeah, um, and I I was pretty good, but I just kept getting injured. You know, I wasn't meant for it. God was trying to tell me to be an actor, I guess. And then finally, after resisting and then working retail and working construction and working all these different jobs. I, I can't like, imagine you being in retail. Like, oh, yeah. I like, was good. Aren't you Lou Ferrigno, <laughs> son? And you're like, would you like to buy this Gap shirt? Well, like, one, no. That well, just doesn't work out. One time I was I, I was at a restaurant, Italian restaurant, and I was I love food and I love cooking. And, and I was sitting there getting this restaurant experience, and this one guy is like, hey, what are you doing here? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes... You don't. You need to be an actor. You need to be. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Yeah. And I was like, this guy's saying it. Yeah. I need to know this. You know yeah. what I mean? And I worked security one night uh, for a while, one summer, and this guy's like, why are you working this job? Yeah. You're, you should be on TV. And I'm like, why do they keep? Everyone keeps telling me this. <laughs> I mean, why? Why am I keep resisting this? And finally, when I ran out of options of things to to work, I was like, finally, I need I need to just start taking classes and doing this, and I did, and here we are. And now I'm in the red booth. That's so just cool. Like that. What a great story. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's just you just got to listen to the little whispers, you know what I'm saying? You got to listen to it because they keep chirping and you just and they'll just get louder and louder and until you do something about it, they just keep chirping, you know? That's awesome. Take I'm action. Glad, I'm glad you did. Yes, thank you. Well, yes. I'm proud of me too. <laughs> okay, well we have to take another break. Okay. But we'll be right back with Lou Ferrigno Jr. Okay, so we drowned the fire. Yep. Stirred it. Mm -hmm. Drowned it again. Mm -hmm. And now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with actor Lou Ferrigno Jr. I'm having a great time. This is good. This, this is, is awesome. It's, it's, I didn't think it would be as fun and painless. That's, this is good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, good. <laughs> he did exactly what I told him to. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and you're very good. You're very good. <laughs> Thank you. Are you trained as a reporter or investigatory journalist? No, negative. Okay. I no. think I've just been doing this for four years, so. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You have to have an interest in people, you know, to really give a damn, you know? I actually do. I think it's really interesting. I love hearing stories like this and, and uh, like uh, about what you have gone through in your career to be, to be in this business. Mm -hmm. It's very fascinating to me. It's brutal. Um, Absolutely. I yeah. mean, just day to day. It's like just staying, A, staying relevant and then just like staying motivated is, is tough. And even just, but you really got to care about like people and stories and and I, on set, you'll meet the most interesting people with the most interesting stories. And I did, uh, when well, I'm happily never after, I met this guy, and, and his name, the director called him Halibut. 
And I was like, halibut. And because he was like raised in this halibut farming like like culture in Alaska. And I was like, what? You're and like, I, what? What is he doing here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's you got to care about people, you know? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, very cool. well, I definitely do. I love helping to tell stories and support the arts. I think there's tons of amazing people in Hollywood, actually. It's true. And those few jerks give it a bad rep. That's true. That's what I think. Yeah. We're so. going to dispel that myth. That's right. Yes. And by the way, so this is super cool about the fact that you grew up with um, having a, a dad that was so famous. And it's it's kind of funny to hear the story about how you were like not wanting to be it. You know, like, no, no, no. Like yeah. trying to do all these other things. Yeah. And, you know, eventually you just kind of like came into your own and, and decided to like to yeah. go with it. I mean, it was... Uh, and. It, and People will say, oh, you were raised in it, or this is... I'm like, believe me, I resisted, and I didn't want to do it, um, but it's like, it just, it's... I was born to do this, I feel. That's how I feel. Yeah. Because I just love playing the comedy. I've done improv um, at UCB and I.O. And, That's awesome. UCB's great. I, it's fantastic. And it's just, just to, and I've challenged myself just to be balanced, to respect the craft, and, and to learn about just everything about it, not just be... Because a lot of times you hear about these celebrity kids... And it wasn't my choice. I didn't. I didn't choose to be born into the family, and I'm very lucky to. But at the same time, like, who am I to be some like dick that's gonna like give my father a bad name? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm. I, I don't. It's, that's I think, good that you care about that. For sure. And I think. Um, and I think with every all the opportunities I've been afforded to me, it's like, who am I to just 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 give that a bad name and to just like be some jerk that ends up doing bad things? You know. So I just try to do my best, and and I enjoy doing it. You know. Well, so. what, that's so cool. And what about like your dad? How has he given you advice and, and what sort of mentorship does he do with you? He's, uh, he's very, he's always been very supportive. Um, we're in a very different kind of category because he's a bodybuilder and that's how he got into the business. And he is an actor, yes, but he's more of a character guy at this point. And he did um, King of Queens for a bunch of episodes, but he was Lou Ferrigno. And, and really, he's an icon. So he's, yeah. he's Lou Ferrigno. He appears as Lou Ferrigno. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was, what was the movie he was in and he was like selling I his I love you, man. Yeah, I love you, man. I yeah. love that movie. It's yeah. so good. It was really good. He's like, why haven't you sold my house yet? Yeah, and that yeah. was not our house. And people ask no. us all the time that was our house. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was, um, but he's, so I'm, I'm in a different category. I like to think of myself as like, I'm like an actor's actor. You know, I try to, I try to be as well-rounded as possible. And we look differently. I think from the neck down, I look like him, like genetically. But from the, from like the chin up, it's like more like my mother. So it's kind of a good thing because people are like, you don't look like your dad. And I think if we were too similar, I think that could have its own issues. Um, so, so it's good. And I, he, but he, I mean, as much as he can help me, he can. Um, but in terms of nepotism, it's, there's real no nepotism on the talent side. Yeah. It's up to the public to determine who they like. And, you know, Frank Sinatra Jr. is like a singer who just sings Frank Sinatra songs. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be just like, you're like, oh. I'm in a Hulk costume. <laughs> yeah, hey. exactly. Yeah. If people were like, oh, they should make a Hulk movie and you play Hulk Jr. Yeah. And I'm like. That's a good idea. You know, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why they haven't thought of that yet. Uh, uh, but that's not what I'm trying to do, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so every, and people are, are believing what I'm doing so far. So it's good. And I'm so. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. And we'll see with SWAT because that's going to be kind of the true test. I think it's going to be really cool and it's going to take off. And SWAT looks like an amazing show. I mean, he's got some of my favorite people in the show already. Mm -hmm. So. So there you go. Yeah. It's very exciting. And, I'm, and yeah. uh, what projects are you working on next as well? Um, right now, I'm I'm tied to SWAT. So for the next um, few... You're on lockdown? I'm uh, not on, not exclusive, but okay, like good. for me mentally, that's like where I'm putting all my attention to. And yeah. then as, as pilot season comes around, and I, I've worked every single um, December and November for the last five, six years... Um, I just did a subway campaign that was the Italian hero subway. Yeah, you've done a ton of commercials, by the way. There's I have, a side, yeah. This side thing, like yeah, it's, a, it's, a lot of commercials. I think back and I'm like, wow, that was that was me. And then uh, and so and they're still running, which is really cool. So I've been uh, Navy Federal commercial, uh, subway commercial. Uh, I was one of lucky enough to be one of the Carl's Jr. like. Like those Dude, guys, nice. I like was, the ketchup like spilling and everything. Well, it was I was the fish guy, so I was the Carl's Jr. It was a, it was a grilled. Um, cod sandwich, nice. so it's tartar sauce, okay. um, which I hate. <laughs> but that's how that's my acting. Is I that's I try because I hate tartar sauce, but I and did then it anyway. you had to eat it anyway. Well, for the audition, they had to eat it, and I was like, I don't want to do this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say screw it. He's I'm gonna walking. Say, He's so, walking out. 
<laughs> and then I get in there and I'm like, I'm not gonna book it anyway, so I'm not even care. So I start shooting. I start shooting like with them, and I'm like just ma making jokes and stuff. And they're like, we love them, and we booked. And I'm like, really? Uh, but every sandwich was perfect, <laughs> and it was perfect. And I was sweating when I was eating because I was just I get excited. And I have a question. So these commercials that you do, they're national, right? And then mm -hmm. they pay pretty well. Would you say that they pay better than like a TV show gig? They pay. Um, I. Th you know what? Sometimes it's even depending on the TV show, but they pay over a good amount of time, and it usually comes when you're least expecting it, which is nice. But some I've done smaller ones, but the the bigger ones, the campaign, the subway campaign was like was awesome because it was multiple spots, and one of the producers liked my voice, and I and I got I can get super really Italian, so then I started being like really Italian. Yeah. And then they're like, "Alright, we want dad, you." Right? He's my dad, you know. Yeah, he's Italian. Lou we Frigno, want yeah, this this guy, you know. Yeah. Um, and so uh, <laughs> it's in there. So um, so then they're like, "Alright, well, will you, will you do the voiceover?" And I was like. Well, it's your money. So then I did it, <laughs> and the next thing you know, I'm getting paid double. Um, but that was just really cool because I was like, wow, it, it, it turned from one spot to, and it was one line, and then they gave me multiple spots, which is really, really awesome. That's so cool. And I eat Subway, too. That's good. So it was good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. Well, before we wrap it up, I wanted to ask you, what advice do you have for people that want to get into the business and be an actor? Um, what advice? Uh, you got to know why you're doing it. And you got to know, be very clear on, on the actual acting if you like to do it. Because if you do it for the money, if you do it for the fame, that's fleeting and it's never going to last. And I'll tell you the truth. I've seen many actors that have just gone for the wrong reasons and um, it does not work out. Because after a while, you got to stick through this, this tumultuous, uh, unpredictable, nonstop, showing up every day um, business that you're in that's cutthroat and ruthless and unless you really you have to find the joy in it and you have to find that what makes you happy and if you do that your your success will be that much more at the end it will really I, so um and also really just just it's all about the work it's really all about the work it's not a it's and that essentially that's my point wrapped up is is just and and show up show up and go forward stop saying oh well i don't want him to be offended by this just go forward and move forward and take a step 10 minutes at a time. That's what my therapist says. Well, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's a whole nother segment. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really great advice. I know this is a very difficult industry, and it does take a lot of persistence. And I'm I'm so happy for you and all Thank the you very much. new show and, and everything on SWAT. Go and check him out. And where should people find you if they want to see what's going on with you? Um, Instagram, LouFerignoJr.com uh, is my website for most of just everything that I've done. Um, my Facebook page, Lou Ferrigno, at Lou Ferrigno Jr. Um, is really good. But my Instagram is the most um, kind of utilized tool at this point. Awesome. And so. you're still also training people too. So if people want to get trained yep. by Lou Ferrigno Jr. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a way to get to me, but yeah. we'll see. And I start as early as five in the morning. So Dang. I was up at five this morning. So. Okay. Yep. <laughs> He's working out. Yep. Nice. Well, thanks so much for being here Thank today. Thank you so much, Kimberly. It was yeah. Pleasure. It's been awesome. And uh, don't miss the show, the SWAT show coming up. November 2nd, 10 p.m. on CBS SWAT.